If you're looking to borrow money, which of the following is the best bank to go with? What about if you're looking to save money? Bank A, 15.67% annually compounding. Bank B, 14.3% quarterly compounding. Bank C, 15% weekly compounding. Bank D, 16% daily compounding. We learned in the previous video that banks are required to state their interest rates as annual percentage rates. But for our purposes, we want to convert them to effective annual rates, or EAR. That's because EAR presents the interest rates as if they compounded once per year. And so that would put us on equal footing, and then all we would have to do is see which is the highest and lowest number in order to determine our answer. So the way we would do this is by plugging in our variables into this formula. EAR is equal to 1 plus Q, which is the quoted interest rate, over M, which is the number of compounds per year, raised to M minus 1. And setting up a quick chart so that we can see these variables laid out before us, we see that the quoted interest rate for A is 0.1567, and M, or the number of compounds per year again, is 1 because it compounds annually. Similarly for bank B, it's 0.143 quoted interest rate, and four compounds per year because it's quarterly. And for bank C, it's 0.141 and 52 because there are 52 weeks in a year. And for bank D, it is 0.16 and 365 compounds in a year. So if we put the variables for each bank into the formula for EAR, we should get 0.1567 for A and 0.1508 for B and 0.1512 for C, and 0.1735 for D. Now to answer the question, all we have to do is consider the objective of the borrower and the objective of the saver in a very logical manner. So the borrower's objective would be to pay as little interest as possible on the money that they take out of the bank. So what they would do is they would look for the lowest interest rate offered. And that would be bank B. So this is the best bank for the borrower. But the saver's objective is to get as much interest payment on their bank deposit as possible. So they would look for the highest interest rate offered. And that is offered by bank D. And that's the best bank for the saver to go with. Jeanette purchases a home for $375,000 with a 20% down payment. The rest she borrows from a bank, which offers her a mortgage at 6.35% compounded semi-annually and is to be amortized over 25 years. What are her monthly payments? What will be her outstanding balance after five years? Out of the $375,000 of the mortgage, 20% is paid off by Jeanette, or in other words, $75,000 is paid off by Jeanette. The remaining 80% is what she takes on as a loan. So $300,000 is the value of the mortgage. And before we can calculate the value of the monthly payments, we need to resolve one more issue. We know that the bank has given us a quoted interest rate of 6.35%, but that is an annual percentage rate, which they're required by law to give us. So APR is equal to 0 0.0635. We need to convert it to an EPR, and we can do that directly by using this formula, 1 plus Q over M raised to M over P, minus 1. And we know that the quoted interest rate is equal to 0 0.0635 and M or the number of compounds per year is equal to 2 because it compounds semi-annually raised to 2 over 12 because there are monthly payments to be made in 12 months in a year. And that should give us 0 0.00522299 nine zero seven eight three and that keep in mind is our r value which will plug into the present value of annuities formula which is c times the present value interest factor of annuities which is again one minus one over one plus r raised to n divided by r and so what we're looking for in this case is the C value, or the monthly payments. So rearranging the formula to solve for C, we get present value of annuities is equal to the reciprocal 
of the present value interest factor of annuities, or R over 1 minus 1 over 1 plus R raised to N. And plugging in our values, we get 300,000 times R, which I'm not going to write out again because it's a really long and annoying number, over 1 minus 1 over 1 plus R raised to 300. And we get N by multiplying the number of payments in a year, which is 12, by the number of years. So that would be 12 times 25. So that gives us 300. So when we multiply this out, if we've done everything correctly, we should get a total value of $1,982.27 as our monthly payment. And by comparison, the next part is much simpler. We're just using the present value of annuities formula and making a few changes. So PVA is equal to C times 1 minus 1 over 1 plus R raised to N divided by R. Our C value is what we just calculated, or 1,982.27. Our R value is also the same, 0 0.005222990783. And our N value, again, is the number of years times the number of payments per year. Number of payments per year is unchanged, it's still 12. But the number of years has gone down by five. So 25 is the total length of the mortgage. And now we're five years into the loan. So it's 12 times 20, which is equal to 240 payments or 240 periods. And so given these three variables, we plug them into our PVA formula and we should get $270,819.03 as our outstanding balance after five years have elapsed. That brings us to the end of this video. Still confused? Rewind to the relevant part of the video by clicking on the sections listed to the left. For more, be sure to take a look at the Academic Success Center website, where you'll find tip sheets and tutoring hours in case you need a more face-to-face -face approach.